Welcome back, tribe, to another Heroes of Middle-Earth video. Today we're going to be discussing the new Elrond event and how much it will cost you if you're looking to get him unlocked day one. This is a shocking amount of money to a lot of people. These are mobile games that are costing more than some people's entire computer systems. I'm going to break it down for you so you guys have got an idea of what to expect. I will be unlocking Elrond at 5 star. Make sure you join me live on Twitch. There'll be a link to that in the description down below. When the event goes live, I'll be there, so come join me. But right now, let's just break down the cost so you can get an idea to see if this is in appetite for you. Let's do this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what do we know about the Elrond Legendary event? Well, first and foremost, from the data mines, we already can safely assume that five elves are going to be required for that unlock. Minimum five star to get a five star Elrond, seven star for a seven star Elrond, unclear whether or not a six star unlock will get you a six star Elrond. Don't quite know that just yet. What we do know is that it's either going to be five or at least uh, at most seven stars to unlock. And it is elves, okay? We've got five characters available in the game. Well, Adwen will be available in about three days, but those are Leliel, Elora here, Lomion, and Naramiri, with El Eladan coming shortly to the game as well after the Adwen event. Now, Eladan, we know that. From the wording we found in the data mines, it sounds like his event is going to actually closely resemble the Samwise Gamgee Gardener's Journey event, rather than a marquee, as we can see with Adwen coming in about three days. So those are going to be different events, and I can't quite calculate the cost of getting Eladan. However, we can safely assume that if it's anything like the Samwise Gamgee event, then it'll be broken up into two tiers. The first one will get you a three-star unlock. You'll have passively regenerating energy over the course of the event. And then when you complete all of tier one, you'll be able to go to tier two of the event where you could potentially get up to a seven-star character. However, that is going to require a significant investment in a particular faction. Now, it can be one of two things. It could be the elves that are required for Elrond, or it could also be Dunedain or Rangers that are required. Now, I wouldn't put it past CG to make it the Rangers because that actually makes us diversify where we place our investments, okay? So how why would it be Rangers? Well, according to the data mine, Eladan works very well with his family, namely Elrond, his brother Elro here, his sister Adwen, and himself. But also, he works very well with the Dunedain. So the Dunedain isn't necessarily a faction within the game at the moment, but the Rangers are what we class as the Dunedain. So Strider obviously required at most likely five star plus for a full unlock or a four star plus if it's like Samwise Gamgee's event. Elro here, obviously he's another member of the Rangers, uh, the Dunedain. Uh, then you've got Miri and Halberad. Now Miri is available from the Guild Store, daily refreshes for the Guild Store, I believe between 500 and 1,000 of that guild currency. And Halberad is a lot trickier to get a hold of. Now, if you happen to be spending money on the game, then absolutely you can get a pay-to-play unlock. But otherwise, you need challenge tokens for him. And it's expensive to get him unlocked. So if you do not have Halberad unlocked, if you do not have him at potentially four stars plus, the likelihood of us getting Eladan at five to seven stars has decreased massively. So I'd recommend most people don't count on that and instead focus on the other elves that are in the game. I'm not going to look at an Eladan um, unlock to see how much that costs. We're just going to look at these elves here. So first and foremost, I want to go and talk about Adwen, her legendary her legendary event, her event that's coming shortly, her marquee event, and how, it, how much is it going to cost for her? Okay, because it's not cheap, guys. It really isn't cheap at all. We can see the first four tiers down here. We get 25 shards of Adwen for 100 in total, three-star unlock. After that, you can see over here, three-star Adwen is required for a tier five. Tier six, five-star Adwen is required. And these don't actually give you shards. These are just giving currency. It's giving you extra XP and extra gold, which is fine and everything, but it does mean that we need another means of unlocking her shards. Now, typically CG will release a marquee, and then in about six weeks, it'll be farmable with gems, potentially in this game. That's how they did it in Galaxy of Heroes. And then another six weeks, they'll add it to a recurring node. So they might go into the guild energy. It might go into a hard node, either for sh uh, light or shadow factions. But we don't know yet, as this is all very new. It might even go into a store. We just don't know quite yet. However, it has been data mined that there are going to be packs available that you can purchase either with real life currency 
or with gems. It's unclear yet. If I were to guess, I would say it would be both. I would say that there's going to be a pack available where you might be able to purchase 50 shards of Adwen or a chance at 52 whatever or 52 whatever. But there will also be packs available for purchase through gems. We have data mined drop rate currencies for those now. And here are the drop rates. So it looks like you can get a number of different drop rates per purchase of whatever pack this is that they're bringing out. Again, I think if anything, this is going to be purchasable through gem packs. You can see you can get as little as 12 shards and that's got a drop rate of about 17 and a half percent. But the most common drop rate is going to be of 17 shards with a drop rate of about 70 percent. Now, you can get a complete full seven star unlock, but the likelihood of that being dropped, these are data mined facts. So obviously they are subject to change is 0.1% chance of actually having that happen. So guys, don't count on getting an Adwen pack and just getting a full star unlock. You'd be very lucky. There'll be very, very few people that actually buy these packs and get that unlock. How does this really convert? Now, I'm not gonna do the math to try and check out the average drops that you'd get when you purchase a certain number of packs. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the highest denominator here, that 70% chance of 17 shards, and take a calculation and think how, men, how much is that going to cost us on average to get a 5 star and a 7 star unlock. Okay. And this is roughly how I'm figuring it out calculated there or thereabouts. The three star unlock for Adwen is basically going to be free for everybody. We can assume you can use basically any characters in these marquee events. They might even give you characters to use to get that three star unlock. I don't think it's going to be a difficult job trying to get the initial unlock for Adwen. After that, if you're looking for the five star, I would guesstimate it at about $150. I know that's pretty steep. How did I get to those figures? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a rough guesstimate, okay? So if we're averaging roughly 17 shards a drop and we can only make an assumption about how much these packs are going to cost, we can cross-reference it with our closest competitor, which would be Galaxy of Heroes, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, how much those pack costs. That's about 1,200, 1,300 crystals or gems in that game per pack pull, right? So in order to get five stars, you need 310 shards in total. We're already given 100 which means we need 210 shards. Divide that by an average of 17. You're looking at about 12 packs. Okay, so 12 times, let's say 1,200 gems. That's about 14,400. And we know from the store currently that you can get about 11,000 for $100. So trying to get the remaining, you know, 3,000-ish three, 3, gems, we could maybe round that up to about 150 because the drop rate could be much better. It could be much better or it could be slightly worse. You could only be getting a bunch of 12s. So I've tried to round it to around about $150 for that three uh, for that five star unlock. Now, if you're looking to go the full hog and you're looking to see how much is it going to cost me roughly to get to that seven star unlock, I am thinking it's about 350 plus. You might get very, very lucky and you might get some big, big pulls. You might even get the full 810 and you might not have to spend anywhere near that amount of money. But if we are again looking at 810 and you minus the 100 that you get from the event, that's 710 shards, divide that by 17. That's about 42 pulls, 42 pulls times about 1200 gems. We're looking at about 50,000 gems. Divide that by 11,500, I think. So that's four and a half volts, roughly which is probably in the region of 350, 450-ish. Between that sort of area, you might get better drops. Obviously, you might get some big ones, but this is just to give you a ballpark figure of how much it will cost just to get Adwen. This is not even looking at Elrond. This is just Adwen at the moment. So we're already getting an idea of where we're going to land roughly, okay? But what else is going to come into play for this, guys? Because it's not just Adwen, as we've already discussed. What else do we have to think about? Well. This, the star counts, okay? Before we even think about how frequently do we have to farm these characters, we also have to think about how much gold is it going to cost us just to get those characters starred. And I'm gonna take a look at that here real quickly now. So if all you're looking to do is farm and get five characters to five stars, that costs about 1.25 million gold, essentially. One and a quarter million gold. Now, if you don't have the gold, then fair enough. If you've got some of it saved up, then you can offset costs a little bit here. But 
if you don't have that gold, the only way to get it, realistically speaking, is through the game and by using the actual in-game uh, store. Because they do have a store inside the chest section over here that can drop you gold, essentially. Now, based on what I've read from other people that have been testing and experimenting on this, how much does, you know, X amount of crystals convert into gold on an average? Based on those drop rates, about one vault is going to give you about 1.1 million gold. So just shy of what you'd need in order to get five star uh, five five star characters. OK, so that's a hundred bucks in itself just for the gold. Obviously, if you've got some gold saved up and if you, during the time from now until the event goes live, you don't spend that gold, then you won't have to spend nearly that much amount of crystals. I'm just putting it to you guys right now. If we're just looking at a base amount of money, how much this is going to cost. OK, if you're looking at every single expense and you don't have anything, this is roughly where we're going. We're saying anywhere between 150 to 400 ish for Adwen's seven star unlock, five star to seven star. And then you're probably looking at an additional vault at the very least to get the gold that you're required to take those characters to five star. Now, if you want to take them to seven star, it's five million gold. In total, one character to seven star is a million in total. You're doing that five times, that is five million gold. Okay, so we're talking five volts, essentially. That's $500. That is a lot of money, especially if you've just dropped about 400 on Adwen. We're already looking at like $900 here. And of course, that's not all. What about the actual shards for the other elves? Well, fortunately, the people on lotto.gg Lovely, lovely people. They've got a Discord server. Go ahead, check that out. They actually have a farming guide that people can use. Let's go check it out. There is a link to this in the description down below. And this here is that spreadsheet. It's actually incredibly intuitive, very good to use. It's You simply follow the link inside their resources tab, uh, inside this lotter.gg Discord page. You go ahead, you create yourself a copy of the file to use for your own, and then you just change some of the gold, uh, the red boxes here to suit your own needs. Now, I've done a little bit of additional finagling just to add a few things that I would like to see. But as you can see over here, you've got your campaign energy. This is how much you get naturally. You put in a number, how many daily refreshes you are going to be doing, and then it's going to cross reference that with how much energy you are supposed to be spending. OK, over here, the total number of days expected for the farm. This is an estimate. Everybody's got a guess here, guys. We don't know how long it's going to take for this Elrond event to come around. I'm guessing at the moment, just a month. I'll say in a month's time, the Elrond farm is going to be live. So what you do is you select the characters that you're farming. You've got the yes or the no selector here. I've just put them all on yes, because again, I don't think Eladan is going to be a good use of my investment because it's too much of an unknown. So I'm just looking at these four, even though I think Eladan will be the primary character you want to eventually use. OK, then you think, how many shards do I need? How many shards do you currently have farmed? OK, so you put in that number and then it will it'll use a calculation based on a drop rate of 38 percent. How many shards you will have over this given period? So you can see I'm in the negatives here for a five star unlock, which means I will have roughly 61 shards more than I need to based on a 28 day farm. OK, and similarly for Lomion, I'll have 41 shards more and Elro heal I'll have 400 more shards and you get the drift, right? So essentially what you can do is you can check to see how far away you are from the event and what you would actually need to do in order to get that five star unlock, six star unlock, seven star unlock, etc, etc. OK, and then it's going to tell you the total gem cost of this particular farm. How many gems are you going to need to do this? This one right now for me currently based on how much I'm refreshing for these nodes, how quickly I am refreshing the nodes. I'm even overkilling it over here on the cantina. Sorry, campaign energy, guild energy, get there eventually. But I want to overinvest there. I would like to overinvest there. OK, so based on my current farms, it's saying that my total gem cost is about 9,200, which is about a vault. So just for the farming of the shards, if you're going for a five star unlock, you're probably looking at about 10,000 crystals, roughly, depending on how far along you are. Now, you can offset that, obviously, with your daily gem intake that you get from your arena and your daily quests. But a lot of people are going to have to supplement that just to top it up. Now, I could probably drop this guild energy down to one refresh and we're just about. Yeah, no, we, we should easily make it. Actually, if I was to drop this down to, let's say, 220 energy. OK, let's say 160 energy. Wow. OK, let's say 120 energy. Oh, wow, we don't need much at all. Yep. Yeah, OK. 
So there we go. Yeah, absolutely. Even at a one refresh of the guild energy, I could probably get a five star unlock of these characters and only averaging about six and a half thousand gems uh, in total across this 28 day period. Now, this is a super useful tool and I highly recommend everybody do it, but that's adding roughly anywhere between, you know, $50 to an extra $100 just for the shard farms. Okay. Don't forget, we still need to actually level these characters up, presumably at least to around level 40 to even compete in the Elrond event. And then you actually need to gear the characters themselves. It's a lot of additional expense. Don't get caught out on gear right now, guys. That's the one thing that I would suggest. If we take a look at the gear that's required just to get some of these characters over here, let me zoom in very quickly. Just to get some of the gear required, taking these characters, this this gear five here is actually to get to gear six. To get five characters up to gear six, it's roughly about 300 luminous crystals. The blue luminous crystals, luminous crystal two, I believe it is. So if you are investing in your arena uh, team, for example, I would highly recommend you don't invest your luminous crystals. Maybe if you've got a shadow, predominantly shadow factioned arena team, then maybe invest in some of them just to try and maintain your rank. But if you're guaranteeing or you're counting on this Elrond farm being your new meta uh, team to be using in arena, you are going to need to have the gear available in order to farm them. And they're not easily whaleable on. You can obviously use your energy to farm some of the nodes for the luminous crystals, but that takes a lot of time. The return on that is not great. And the only other source is going to be random packs that might come out. And that's the one last thing that I guess I should talk about here, guys, is there is most likely, as this is a brand new legendary event, there is most likely going to be packs for the Elven faction. You will be able to purchase uh, 50 shards of Adwen, Aladdin, Elrohil, Lomion, and Naramini for $50 or something like that. And also maybe it comes with 20 luminous crystals or 40 luminous crystals. We've seen similar packs to that in the past, but we can't guarantee that we will get a certain number of shards for certain Elvish characters. They're probably going to be there because CG is going to want to maximize on the investment and try and really get people to unlock Elrond when he first comes out. In totality, though, if you are looking for a big seven star unlock on Elrond, expect to pay at least $1,000 is where I would guesstimate it at, based on just looking at the cost for uh, for gold, for gear, for shard farming, and for getting Adwen up to seven stars. It's going to be a hefty investment, and I highly recommend that anybody that's considering doing it, think about stretching out that farm just a little bit longer, okay? Maybe get the five-star unlock for the very first time Elrond comes round. Otherwise, Please, please, please drag it out for the long term and wait for him to come around for the second turn of the event. So we know that it's going to cost roughly about a thousand pounds for an average person to get a seven star unlock for Elrond. If you're looking just for that five star unlock, I'd say you're probably looking at about $150 for the Adwen to five star. Then you're probably looking at an extra vault for the gold you're going to require. So that we're talking, you know, 250. Then you're thinking maybe what about the gear that we need? Maybe what about the actual farm for the shards that we need? So maybe add an extra 50 to 100 for that. And that's if you're still being very conservative and being very careful with what you're doing. So I'd suggest probably at a minimum, you're probably looking between 250 to 350 dollars. Roughly, I would say for an average person to get a five star unlock. And you're looking at two to three times that if you're looking for a seven star pricey, but only you can really decide if it's worth it. I'd recommend most people take the long route, farm it the free to play way, and just make sure you're doing careful, considerate farming and refreshing the nodes as required, not going overkill. All right, guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Are you prepping for this? Are you going to go for a five star, seven star, not bothering? I want to know. And more importantly, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to your boy Scribe. I'll be putting out more videos very, very shortly. Peace out and big, big love to you all.